Oh, Grace Wood. Uh, audience of citizens, none. Uh, everybody got a chance to read the minutes from the previous meeting. So I'll entertain a motion to accept as read. So move. Second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Boston Bell de Serra, who was doing the gates at Ledge Cemetery, um, emailed me this morning. He's still not ready. Um, he asked me again who the contractor was that would help him with the refinishing. It's the third time. So obviously he hasn't gone to talk to Ted that does superior refinishing. So, and I don't see anything happening there very soon now that the weather's getting bad. But we'll see what happens. Uh, Paul uh, Kendrick, who was at our last meeting and gave that nice uh, presentation, he's all set to be on the agenda for the 30th of November at the council meeting. So if any, if we can make it there to support them and speak if we have to, uh, it's at seven o'clock on the 30th. Um, the pictures that I passed around for the people who didn't see him, he's cleaning and you can see he's got before and after pictures. And he also fixed a bunch of stones that I showed you in the pictures there. Uh, we actually glued one together and it, it's working out fantastic. I went there today. Uh, you can't even tell what he did. It's, it's really a, a nice project. And there's probably 12 to 15 stones that got broke with that last storm when that big tree came down. So he's got his work cut out for him if he's gonna do it. So when he was here, he's all approved from the scouts, uh, from the Eagle uh, board, board of directors. Uh, he's going to get everything donated or raise funds, and uh, he's ready to present it to the council on the 30th. So if you look at the pictures, what he's done, we're just cleaning with simple green and a brush. And, and, and the before and afters are just unbelievable. So uh, he's a good kid. Like I said, if we can all be there to support him uh, in case they have any questions or anything, uh, let's do that. Uh, Steve, public grounds report. The one, one oh. other thing. In the front page of the Citizen tonight, there was a story about another Eagle Scout project that just got completed. A patio. A for patio the Rome Police Department. Yeah. So that's great to see that they're spreading the wealth around, not just here, but PD and other areas as well. Well, I have one that for the Veterans Commission, he's making an informational uh, kiosk at the park for us. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. So and then we have we have a bunch we have Cub Scouts that come in once a month and clean the park, walk around and pick up all the trash. And then we have another bunch of Eagle Scouts that go on the walkway of wars once a month and clean off the bird poop and we'll simonize. So we're getting the kids more and more involved. That's great. And the Cub Scouts came to me after the first of the year. They want us to come in there and tell the kids about the flag, the monuments, and all that stuff. So We'll get the kids involved. But anyways, Steve, you're up. So Parks and Grounds report is, sorry guys, my I can't get my monitor to work, so I'm staring at two different computer, two different screens and it's not really working the way I want it to. Um, New Britain Fence came in, did the fence on Christian Lane. It absolutely came out beautiful. They replaced the gates. The bill has been, the uh, they submitted their invoice. We paid that. So we're on to the next project. And I met Charlie the other day, and I think that's going to fall in their new business. So we'll go to that. You also trim uh, in front of Beckley Cemetery. Yep. We, between us and Highway, we went out and trimmed in front of Beckley Cemetery, same we did last year, knocked that all down. So um, we're kind of just waiting for the contractor to come in and do his final leaf cleanup. And I'm not positive, but I think this might be the end of his contract, and then we'll go back out to bid, or he might have one year left. I'm unsure. I thought he had one more year. I thought it, that was a three-year deal. It just seems like the years go by so quick now, I can't even tell. Yeah, but I think we've only been here for two. Okay. Well, Beckley looks real good, Woody. Yeah, Christian Lane came out beautiful. Willie really did a nice job. 
He came back and added the, uh, the, the, the gate to the, onto the pillars, which I think really makes that place pop now. Uh, okay, we took care of that. Fencing in Christian Lane. Uh, next will be Denison Cemetery. Clean up of the right of way property. Uh, this has been going on for a year now. And Mr. Benson, who's graciously taken this project on, <laughs> has a report. <laughs> My report is minimal. Um, spoke to Mr. Pagley Rolo several weeks ago. He said they were going to stake it again so that we could all see. And then Charles and um, Charles and um, the uh, wood chipper, uh, Dave Sear. Dave Sear and I were going to go and meet him at this on site. I haven't heard nothing since. So and I know that Charles and, and Woody sat down there the other day. Yesterday. Um, so I, I, I think the time has come for us to, um, to do what we can do. And they'll, they'll explain to you what, what they uh, observed down there. But I mean, I, unless, unless, we wanna, unless we want to ambush them at a meeting or, um, I mean, I don't, I don't know what else we're gonna do to, to move this horse here. It's just, <clears throat> they're obviously they, they have no interest in doing this job so it should not take a year for a governmental agency to to um i mean we're not asking a lot so it's a benefit them at all this stuff comes down not really right not just well i spoke to dave sear on election day and asked him because previous to that they had told yeah they were getting a trimmer in there to get bids. And they said, they had mentioned Rogers. Well, when I saw him on election day, I asked him, I said, oh yeah, he says, I gave a bid. But well, right now, they're worried about the property. And then the last time you talked to Joe, right? They were hiring another surveyor to make sure that that 10 foot right away, they were trying to say that it didn't start at the fence uh, or it's, so the fence was on their property and this, that, the other. So I, I went in there yesterday with Steve and I were there. And there's another flag about maybe 30 feet from the road. So somebody's been in there to, re to survey again. The one at the road is still in the same spot. And that's 10 feet off. But anyways, Steve and I looked at it. And what we're going to do his guys are going to go in there and take all those briars out that are on our side of the fence, clean up whatever they can clean up there. There's a couple of two inch trees growing in the back. They're going to trim on the front on the bank because we have to do that anyways. And then he talked about um, bringing some topsoil in so that they can mow that and they'll be able to keep the briars down and all that. So the inside of the cemetery will be in good shape. And then it's up to them. And if we want to go attack them in a meeting or something after, but we'll clean up our side of the fence. Can, uh, we, can we get it? Hey, Woody, can we get equipment inside the fence line? <laughs> the, way, the way it looks right now is we probably possibly could be able to get our backhoe in there, if not at the same time, our bobcat or our trackless to do some brush cutting along the back side of that. Um, the only thing I'm going to probably need from the cemetery committee is appropriation to buy some topsoil and possibly some grass seed to really make it work. Toby and I went out there today, walked the area, and we both agree the more trees, two, in, two to four inch, six inch trees that we can take out of there to clean the whole area up, just so when the contractor goes in there next year, he can mow it to make it look a lot nicer. I mean, it might take a few years, especially with no irrigation, fertilization, to get the grass to grow and germinate, but it's actually going to make the place pop a lot more. And we talked to Charlie about replacing the fence along the neighbor's house, along with the fence along the front of Farmington Ave at Denison. What, what about doing aerial work on the eastern fence line? How, how high can we go up to, uh, to, take, to take out anything that's leading over that fence line at all? Right. So if we got distinctive tree care in, they would be able to bring their omen, and their omen would be able to take a lot of the trees that are hanging along the back edge of that out 
and we could pretty much clean that whole entire, we'll say the one or two foot area that looks like the difference in the 10 foot um, barrier that Worthington Fire District is saying is ours. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. So they're saying the fence truly isn't the fence. The fence is truly not the property line. So you're going to take care of that stuff initially with your crew, and then we'll get distinctive involved to do the aerial work. Right. If we're going to do the aerial work, we'll do the aerial work before we do the topsoil. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Because the aerial will just drive where we just did all, did all the brand new topsoil. Right. So you guys will get in there first and get rid of all the briars and stuff, and then we'll get distinctive in there to take over whatever they can reach. Exactly. Good. Do they work until the snow flies or? They work year round. They don't care if it's snowing or not. And if we have to wait till the ground freezes in say January or February, and oh, yeah. you know, we get into that awkward moment, we'll bring them in for a day or two and see what they can do. I mean, I think in two days right now is like $5,600. And I think we still have better part of 20 grand left in our contractual services through the cemetery budget. Good, great. Okay. So when do you think your guys will get in there? Next couple of weeks? Ah, let's see how the weather plays out over Friday. I think it's supposed to rain and possibly yeah. Monday, and then we go into a holiday break. So we're probably looking at summer November 30th through December, like 7th. Oh, cool. No, oh, that's good. Yeah, the next two or three weeks, four weeks. Yeah. Yep. Perfect. And as, long we'll as, as long as it doesn't decide to snow, because then we go into snow right. operation. Oh. And then we'll wait till all the trim is done and do the fence. Right. Everybody in agreement with that? Does that sound like a plan? Over. Yeah. Okay. So I have your permission if any PO I need to pull for Dunning to get some topsoil or, some, or Supreme Forest products or possibly site one to get some grass seed, we're good? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Green light. That pretty much takes care of old business. New business. What do you, you have something for you? Well, that should have fallen under new business, but we're good. Okay. I'll back up. <laughs> All right. So um, I have some new business. Um, the 24th of. Um, it doesn't make any difference what the date was. I received an email from uh, Lorraine Stubb from the um, Historical. Uh, Historical Society. Thank you. She uh, notified me about a piece of property on Weathersfield Road. Property dates back to 1775, and the new owner is concerned because there is a gravestone in the backyard. Um, dating um, 1840 on the headstone. And she wants to know if this committee has any knowledge of any burials that took place um, on, that on that time frame. Um, I responded that um, I would take this up at the cemetery meeting and I would let her know of our, uh, of our findings. I, I, um, I believe we've, we've had communications like this previously, specifically with um, information about Potter's Field. And it turns out that the town has, we had no information about, I mean, we have a stone with names on there, but we don't know where they're buried or whether there's cremation or full burial. I, I mean, I have no idea what to tell Lorraine, um, and I don't know if Kate can be of help here. Um, so I mean, the I, 1800s? I, what, what was that? But I mean, if there's a, if there's a historical um, a treasure trove of documents, you know, in the safe. Yeah, um, I could, if I could speak, I don't want to speak. Um, yeah, I, currently, if you look at the death certificate, it'll show where someone's buried, but what's the year again? 18, 1840. 1840. 
So it's kind of like a cutoff between New Britain and is New Britain in here? Middle town. Um, it's never, I work for the different industries. Oh, so, nice. uh, yeah, at that time, uh, Berlin and New Britain were kind of still one entity. Um, so it's possible, it's unlikely, but it's possible some of those records are at Brain Town Hall uh, or at the New Britain Public Library. They have a lot of records there. Um, I can see her, her concern is that there might be remains still there and the Senate's going to move the remains. I can tell you that's really unlikely. Uh, a burial dating from 1840 would likely the remains, including the coffin, would be completely gone. Uh, we very have to on that yet. That would not be my concern. It also says that she can't make out the name. I would be interested in the charcoal rubbing of the gravestone to see if we can get a little bit more information off of it, which would probably help. But those are those are my thoughts. You want to you want to contact her? Yeah, if you give me the contact information, I can follow up on this. Sure. <clears throat> okay, yeah, I see it. Well, that would be great. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. As, as long as we're talking about that, um, Dave Alcus called me Tuesday and he has a box of records going back um, to the late 1700s from South Burial Ground. And they had previously been held by a secretary or um, president of that association. Um, and, you know, he asked you know, what we did at Wilcox about those kind of records. Um, and so I don't know if he's going to give them to Kate, um, bring them up here, but it's, it seems like these things come in uh, sometimes twos or threes here where we're getting requests for um, information and then to be supplied with information. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not sure. I didn't know what to tell them to give Kate a call. Oh. So she could digitize those, right? Sure. Could, yeah. 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 And then they would be up in the town records because obviously they're probably not now, right? They, they could be already. Uh -huh. once, well, once you get them, you, then you can look. Yeah. But, but for so often, so many of these cemeteries that we now control, at one point had a board or, or a, an association that was running them, and they just they just fallen and went into disrepair. Um, so, well, and people know yeah. now that we have a cemetery commission right. and they're coming forward yes. with stuff like that. Which, which is nobody did anything for ten years. years. Find a repository for the stuff, and so. Um, well, I would right. I would get a hold of him and ask him to bring him in. Oh, I mean, Dave. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I told him. Yeah. You know, and then they they might already be in there. Would be. Hmm. Interesting. Any other new business? Okay. Our <laughs> next meeting. Oh. <laughs> Our next meeting is scheduled for the 16th of December, which I was just informed by Chris Edge that they are going to have, uh, remember two years ago, they had all the uh, commissioners, they did a thing at the Barrel and Vine. Oh yeah. And we're gonna do it again on the 16th. He hasn't told me where, but he just wanted to give us a heads up. So uh, I don't know what time it's going to be or anything, but I'll play it by ear. We'll just have to come to the cemetery meeting. That's all. Yeah, right. We'll figure something out. Well, if there's no more new business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. At Six twenty. Yeah, go ahead. Oh. You don't want to say it. Make a motion. Make a motion. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you. Have a happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Nice seeing you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Families.